What's up guys? Today I'm kicking off a brand new series about iOS interview questions, and this is gonna focus on coding challenges. My other iOS interview question series focuses on iOS specific questions. This is gonna be general coding questions that you're probably gonna to have to do on the whiteboard or during a phone screen when you're sharing your screen with your interviewer. For this first video, we're gonna start off fairly simple and I'm gonna show you how to do binary search in Swift. Future videos in the series will tackle more complex coding challenges, but binary search is a good introduction and we'll use it as a baseline for some of our future solutions. All right, let's dive in. So at a high level, what binary search does is it basically takes your array and keeps chopping it in half until you find the value you're looking for or it doesn't find the value. Let me illustrate that for you. So let's say the value we're looking for is 14. Let's go ahead and call that key. So key equals 14. Now the first step of binary search is you wanna find the value at the midpoint of the array. For this illustration, let's call that 11. So you compare 14 with 11, you know 14 is greater than 11. So because binary search only works on sorted arrays, we know that we can get rid of the entire left-hand side of this array, everything below 11. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. So now we're working with an array half the size, and that's it, we just keep repeating that process. So we find the value at the midpoint of the array, let's call that 16, compare 14 to 16, we know 14 is less than 16, so we know we can get rid of everything 16 and above. And now we're working with a much smaller array. Again, find the value at the midpoint. In this case, it happens to be 14. So you compare 14 with 14. It is the value we are looking for, so we know it is in the array. If the value we were looking for wasn't in the array, you would keep chopping it in half until you didn't find it. So as you can see, in just a few short steps, we took a very long array and kept cutting it down until we found our value. And that's the basics of binary search. Let's code it up. Okay, to start off here on line four, I have my basic array. It is sorted, which is some random numbers in there. Let's start off with the function signature. So func binary search. And the two parameters we're gonna take in, we're gonna take in an array, which is going to be an array of ints. And then we're also gonna take in the key, which is the value we're looking for, which is going to be an int. And it's going to return a Boolean value. It's just gonna return true or false, whether this array uh, contains the value. And let's go ahead and put in the return statement, uh, just to return false for now. And let's go ahead and call it binary search. The array it takes in uh, is numbers. And then the key, uh, for now, I should say 23. You'll see here on the left, it is returning false because I just have it returning false. There's no code being executed. We're gonna fix that. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is do an error check to make sure the array has any values. So if array.count equals equals zero, let's go ahead and return false. And when you're answering these coding challenges, that's one of the main things you wanna do is you wanna check for edge cases and error handling. So now that we've checked that our array does contain values, we need to set up three main variables. And I'm gonna fast forward the typing and then explain it. Okay, so what I did here on lines 11 to 14 is just set up some variables for index values that I'm going to need. The reason I need the min index is because if I need the front half of the array, I need to know where that starts. Uh, conversely, with the max index, if I need the back end of the array, I need to know what the high end of that is. And then the mid index, if you remember, we need to find the value that's at the mid index. And then here I'm getting that value, let mid value equal the value that is at the middle index of the array. If you're not quite following, don't worry, it'll all make sense once we start building out the code. Because our array is sorted, we can do a quick check to see if our number is not in the array. For example, if you see the numbers array up here, if it is less than one, we know it's not in the array. So if it's zero or a negative number, we know that it's not gonna be in there. Conversely, if it's greater than 65, we know it's not gonna be in the array either. So that's a quick check we can do at the start. So let's write that. Okay, so let me explain lines 16 through 19. So we're just checking if the key, the value we pass in, is less than the array at the min index, which again is gonna be the very first object in the array, or, which is what these two bars are, the key is greater than the value at the max index, which in this case is 65. And again, this is a very quick check we can do when we first get the array to see if the value is not in the array. All right, so the next check we're gonna do is we're gonna to check to see if the key is greater than the mid value. Okay, so what this second check is doing is if key is greater than mid value, then we're gonna go ahead and run this code. We're gonna create an array called slice. Now this is just us slicing the array in half and either taking the bottom half or the top half. In this case, we're creating the higher end of the array because we're taking the mid index plus one through the max index. So we're taking the upper half of the array. And then recursively, we're gonna run binary search again on that slice. So now we're gonna run binary search again on the upper slice. And if you remember back in the illustration, that's all we're doing. We're just chopping the array in half, running binary search again. Chopping the array in half, running binary search again. So that's what's going on here. But again, this is only gonna execute if the key is greater than the mid value. So now we need to run a check for if the key is less than the mid value. 
Okay, so what's going on here in 26 to 29 is very similar to what was going on in 21 to 24, except this time we're only executing it if it's less than the mid value. And since we're only doing this if it's less than the mid value, we want to take the front half of the array. So you can see the array we're creating right here is the min index, which is going to be zero, through mid index minus one, which is the lower half of the array from the mid index. And then just like before, we're running binary search on that slice that we just created, and this slice happens to be the front half of the array. So to summarize, 21 through 29 are doing basically the same thing, except we're either taking the front half of the array or the back half of the array, and then running binary search again on that specific slice. So if you're following what's going on, you really know there's only one option left. So on 16 and 19, this is where we check if it's higher or lower the min and the max of the array, so meaning it's outside the bounds. This check is if it's higher than the mid value. This check is if it's less than the mid value. So the only option left is if it's equal to the mid value, meaning we found our value. So let's write that. So again, what's going to happen every time you run binary search, you're going to check to see if it's within the bounds. If it's not within the bounds, you're going to execute this code and return false, be done with it. If the key is within the bounds of the array and it's greater than the mid value, then you're going to go ahead and slice up the array in half and keep running binary search. Same thing, if the key is within the bounds of the array, but it's less than the mid value, now you're going to start chopping up the first half of the array. And then finally, the last option is if the key is equal to the mid value, then you're going to go ahead and print uh, the key is found in the array and then you're going to return true. And then you see here, we're calling our binary search on number 23, uh, it is returning true. So let's, and 23 is in the array right here. So, uh, you know, 99 is not in the array, right? So let's go ahead and change this to 99 and it'll rerun. It says 99 is not in the array. Cause what happened here is you went into this first block of code right away. So is the key less than the array min index? No, that's not true. However, the key is greater than the max index, which is 65. So right away you print, it is not in the array and then you return false. Now let's walk through a value in the array. So let's go ahead and do 10. That's in the array. You can see 10 found in the array and this returns true. Let's walk through it. So the key is not less than the min index and not greater than the max index. So that means it's within the bounds. So we're not going into this block of code. Is the key greater than the mid value? No, mid value is gonna be 19. So it's gonna be less than that. So we're gonna go into this block of code, 26 to 29. So the slice we're gonna create is min index to mid index minus one. So that's basically one to 18. And then we're gonna run binary search on this slice of the array, this one to 18 slice. And we're gonna keep doing that what we just did until we find our value of 10. So that's why it returns true. So there's binary search. That wasn't too bad, right? Again, this was just the introduction to the series. Future challenges will be a little bit more difficult. All right, if you found this at all useful, go in and subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.